So if uh, he had learned something of Hinduism or Buddhism, he would go back to Jerusalem and talk something about Buddha. He would have talked something about Krishna. He never uttered the names of these Hindu deities and the name of Buddha and the monks. So Jesus Christ always mentioned about the prophets, the name of prophets, the book of the Old Testament, and he taught the disciples out of the teachings of the prophets, out of the book of the wisdom, out of the five books of Moses, uh, out of various kind of chronicles and the historical books that has been found in the Bible instead of any other religious texts that can be found in the world. And Hindu gurus, they are always after these sources. They always claim, you know, Hindu gurus when they travel to America, when they travel to Europe, when they travel to, uh, you know, African countries, when they come to Nepal, all they claim is that Jesus traveled to India to learn from Hindu gurus. He traveled to India in Nalanda University to learn from, you know, Buddhist monks. And in this way, they brainwash us. In this way, they brainwash the Westerners and the Europeans and the uh, uh, new tribes that has been uh, originating in the country, uh, in various kind of nations and in various kind of continents. Uh, so I believe that uh, it's very important for you and me to understand that Jesus, he never traveled to India. He never came to Kashmir. He never came to Ladakh. He, he never came to monasteries to learn about um, various kind of religions. He already knew everything. But at the same time, he grew up in Galilee in, and in Nazareth and in surrounding areas with various kind of Roman people, with Greek people, with Sumerian people, with uh, Canaanite people, with, uh, with Galatians and, uh, you know, all of these uh, pagan people. But he was never, never influenced by this pagan rituals. Uh, the pagan rituals uh, practiced by Greeks and the Romans were uh, much closely uh, noted by Jesus Christ. He, he had seen them practice this kind of uh, evil practices. He knew about the child sacrifices that was happening in these pagan rituals among the Greeks, among the Roman Empire, among the Canaanites, among the Samaritans, among many other religions of that time. They were even sacrificing animals to different other deities. Those religions were quite similar. The practices in those religions were quite similar to the practices that was happening in the uh, uh, Dadin uh, Hindu uh, kingdom, Dadin India of that time. Hello guys, I just want to welcome you once again to Bible TV. This is me Thomas Bogarty and as usual today I'm again I'm going to speak about something about Christianity and uh, some uh, misconception about Jesus Christ, some misconception about Christianity uh, that has been established uh, due to the legend that has been surrounding uh, in various kind of countries and we're going to talk about uh, the false doctrines that got spreaded due to various kind of researchers, uh, journalists that travel from various kind of European countries to other countries. And uh, I want to talk about uh, whether Jesus Christ ever traveled to India because many Indians, many philosophers, they claim that Jesus Christ actually uh, traveled to India for various kind of purposes. They claim that Jesus Christ uh, traveled to India all the way from Egypt and he was in one of the university called Nalanda University and there he was educated and many people even believe that Jesus Christ was in uh, Tibet and some of the writers they have tried to translate those work uh, that was claimed by monks uh, saying that Jesus Christ visited Ladakh and a various kind of monastery and there he uh, practiced Buddhism there he uh, learned from some of the monks about Buddhism and he traveled back to uh, Jerusalem so some of the Indians they claim that Jesus Christ was in Kashmir there he learned about Krishna there he learned about Hinduism and due to that religion he went back to Jerusalem and he started preaching to the people of Jerusalem and Israel about what he was learning in Nalanda University from the Indian gurus as well as various kind of Buddhist monks and all of these claims are they false or are they true? Uh, many kind of um, uh, this kind of things are, are spreading so rapidly that the Europeans, the Westerners, they have started backsliding themselves and they have gone astray and they have started believing on various kind of uh, Hindu philosophy and Buddhist philosophy, thinking that even Jesus Christ, he traveled to India, he traveled to uh, 
uh, Tibet to learn from um, Buddha, to learn from Krishna, to learn from various kind of deities and various kind of uh, texts from Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. And uh, all of these things uh, have brought up and various kind of books have even been written in various kind of languages, especially uh, some of the Russian journalists and some of the Russian uh, philosophers. They claim that Jesus Christ traveled to India and they have even come up with various kind of books. The thing that this kind of journalists like Nicholas Notovich and Levi H. Dowling and Nicholas Rorich. Uh, Nicholas Notovich was a Russian journalist. Low at Levi H. Dowling was actually an American preacher and Nicholas Rorich was a Russian philosopher and he was an archaeologist. You know, all of these people, they tried to claim that Jesus traveled to India and they, he traveled to uh, Kashmir, he traveled to uh, Tibet, uh, Ladakh. And some people, uh, they believe the, uh, some of the Ahmadian uh, denomination from Islam, they also believe that Jesus Christ traveled to uh, India in Kashmir and there he died and he was resurrected from there. And they spread the rumor that, you know, uh, the last years about Jesus Christ. What happened to Jesus Christ after he reached 12, year, 12 years old until he was uh, 30 years old. Uh, like the last years of 20 years, 28 years. Jesus Christ's last years was 28 years old. And then you find out that uh, after his resurrection, where did he travel and what happened to him? So uh, the book of uh, gospel clearly mentions that uh, in 12 uh, years he, he was in Jerusalem he was in temple he was asking questions to his uh, teachers his parents were seeking him and he had a clear idea and he told them that I must be in my father's house that is a very clear message of what he actually wanted to do in his life he already knew some of the call that was in his life and then again we find out that uh, all of these uh, people they claim that after 12 years old since Jesus word uh, was a very spiritual person, a very philosophical person uh, due to business in carpenting. Uh, these people claim that he traveled to India in a boat and from there uh, he actually uh, learned from Nalanda University about Buddhism and Hinduism. And uh, there are many kind of books that has been written uh, like the life of Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus Christ lived in India and this kind of books. And there are many kind of libraries bookshops even here in Nepal like I had a French lady like she was very kind to me in the beginning she was even a Christian in the beginning but then later, later on she backslided and you know what after I believed in Christ she was not happy with me and what she started doing was she started giving me some of the books that had been written by these authors and I already knew that the books the information that was found in these books were not genuine and I did not believe and I returned that book back to her because she wanted me to believe that even Jesus Christ had learned from Indians, even Jesus Christ had learned from uh, Tibetan monks and all of these things I really didn't want to believe and she al always wanted to, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep me away from Christianity. She always wanted to keep me away from genuine Jesus Christ that had been mentioned in the Bible. So uh, there are many rumors about uh, Jesus Christ even traveling uh, to Tibet. My question is how did he even travel to Tibet? How did he even travel to Himalayas? How did he even travel to Ladakh? How did he even travel to Kashmir? You know, there was no proper transportation facilities at that time. There was no any syndicate at that time. And you know, people were just spreading from one nation to another nation. And it was really difficult to walk on foot and travel to long distances to learn about Hinduism and Buddhism and all this kind of stuff. and. Uh, and to make the matter even worse, you know, uh, this, there are claim like even Buddhist monks were teaching Jesus Christ and they learned uh, a lot of things from Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ learns a lot of things from monks. And then they think that Jesus Christ was teaching whatever Buddha had already taught him or like uh, the Buddhist had already taught him or like the Hindus had already taught him. And they, there are these Hare Krishna people that what they spread is that Jesus Christ's father is uh, Krishna and uh, Jesus Christ knew that his father was Krishna because he traveled to India and he knew that Krishna was the divine God. Krishna was the one who created him. That's why whenever Jesus did, uh, talked about the father, they claimed that Jesus was talking about Sri Krishna. That also I do not believe because if you really look at the scriptures, if you really look at the Bible, you'll find out that even if in the book of 
uh, Isaiah, you'll find out that Jesus Christ was always spending his time reading the Bible, you know, uh, reading the scriptures in, of the Old Testament. And by the time he was 30 years old, he was really proficient in all of the scriptures. He knew the book of Proverbs, Psalms, uh, the history, uh, the Genesis, the book of Moses, and everything that was written in the Old Testament. And he explained it to the disciples after he was resurrected. And he, the disciples got to know the secrets of what has been mentioned in the Old Testament. And Jesus Christ always, you know, tried to track whatever had been mentioned about him in the Old Testament and tried to make the believers, tried to make the uh, people who had been baptized in his name and his disciples and the apostles about himself, about his recognition about his originality in the Old Testament and he was claiming that he was the only deity, he was claiming that he was the only God and through him uh, the people can go through the kingdom of heaven through to the Father. So Jesus Christ, I believe that he never ever even went to India, he never even went to various kind of other uh, countries like Tibet or the mountainous country of Nepal or like any other um, nearby Himalayan uh, regions of India like Kashmir or Uttarakhand because this is quite impossible because Jesus Christ had been in Egypt when he was a, uh, in a womb of his mother like they ran away from the one who wanted to ki uh, kill him and uh, they ran from Egypt and again angel appeared to Joseph and Mary in a dream and angel told him to come out of Egypt and to travel somewhere else in Bethlehem where Jesus Christ would be ultimately born there and the shepherds would come there the wise men would come there and worship him and present him gifts the wise men of the east would come and present him the gift this wise men were called magis so the thing is like you know even before jesus christ was born the people of the east was really concerned people were really interested about the birth of lord jesus christ and they were astrologers they were very intelligent person and they actually informed the, the uh, person who was trying to take the population of at that time like the Messiah is getting born he was the one who is going to save the world and the people the wise men were looking forward to you know visit forward to you know uh, welcome this Messiah of the world and this uh, wise men of the East the five wise men of the East that uh, the three wise men of the East they traveled and uh, through the help of the star and they found out where the baby was born they worshipped him they presented him, presented him gold they presented him frankincense and they worshipped him and they returned back to their places isn't this an amazing incident that has ever taken place in the history so i don't believe that any other deities like gautam buddha or even uh, krishna or any other deities that were born in india and in uh, tibet and in nepal and other any other south asian countries they never received any other people from the other nations other uh, continents coming to them and receiving them and giving them uh, various kind of gifts and worshiping them that never happened here in south asia and southeast asia but something happened in middle east asia the people of the east they went and they worshiped jesus christ when he was still a child and that is a really great thing and the other thing that i really want to tell was jesus never traveled to india is the other case is because by the age of 12 he already knew who he was he knew who his father was he knew like uh, what his purpose was and he waited and waited and waited because after uh, he was found and he was taken by his father Joseph and uh, the human mother Mary, he was very obedient and listened to them. So the Bible clearly tells us some of the summary of how Jesus was brought up. So Luke 2.42 says Jesus uh, advanced in wisdom and stated tears and in favor with God and man. So Jesus Christ started growing up in the wisdom and in strength and in body and in height in the grace of God and man. So he also grew up in the society as well as he grew up in the sight of God. So he was in Nazareth, he was in Galilee, he, was, uh, he grew up in Galilee and his father, human father was a carpenter. So all that while what he was doing was he was regularly reading the scriptures. He was regularly praying to Father God. He, he, his time had still not come. So when, he, when his time came, he started taking baptism. He started uh, staying fasting. And he uh, started ministry when he was about 30 years old, according to the book of uh, Gospels. So uh, how do we, uh, because if you look at Mark 6, 3, there are some people uh, saying that, is not this the carpenter 
the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon. And are not this, are, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended in him. So when Jesus claimed that he was God, he was son of God, his relatives were offended. They knew who he was. You know, they knew he had never been to India. They knew he had never been to Tibet. They knew that for a long time he had been a carpenter and he has been working as a carpenter. So Jesus Christ, before he was a very good preacher, before he was a charismatic person, before he went from one place to another place preaching about the kingdom of God and fighting against the devil and his kingdom, he was realized as the carpenter and he was a really good carpenter. And this is what it is mentioned in Mark 6. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? You know, Jesus Christ was the carpenter. And besides that, he was even proficient in other activities because he knew how to fish. He knew about uh, the shepherd. He knew about the animal husbandry. He knew about the farming and everything that was taking place in the society. He knew about the uh, high class people, the tax collectors. He knew about the various kind of immoral activities that was happening in the society. He knew about various kind of uh, things, the refugee. He knew that his nation was like a refugee under the control of Roman Empire. He already knew that. So he already knew that uh, his people were even controlled by Greeks of that time. The Greeks were great philosophers at that time. So at that time, even the Greek philosophers, they had not traveled to India and they had not traveled to China. They had not, haven't, uh, they had, they had not traveled to uh, Japan. They had not traveled to Tibet. So there is no question that Jesus Christ ever traveled to these countries for learning wisdom for last 28 years so my question is why people speculate the thing they why they the reason they speculate about uh, where jesus had been in the last years is because they just see the summary of jesus's life in the book of the gospels and even uh, isn't that similar with the autobiography and the biography of other people of other people in this world right now you know like we have kings, we have emperors, we have philosophers, we have actors, we have entertainers, we have musicians, we have soldiers, we have prominent and famous people, uh, the sportsmen in our generations. They don't completely write about their, you know, uh, all their um, uh, childhood things in the biography. Is that even normal at all? If you start writing everything that the child, everything that the person did as a child, then the autobiography would be, inc uh, you know, uh, uh, everything would be uh, jumbled up. It's impossible to write everything that happened in the person's life. So I think like it was, it was not important for uh, the writers of the gospel uh, to tell about everything that had happened uh, when Jesus Christ was a child. So there are many kind of uh, gospels called uh, the Gospel of Thomas and Matthew and this kind of people and they have uh, come up with some kind of uh, telling something about the infancy Gospel of Lord Jesus Christ about what he did when he was a child all of these are made up of things uh, these are not called genuine and they are not even uh, canonized in the Bible so uh, they were not the uh, uh, you know a contemporary person they were not a contemporary people at the time of uh, Jesus Christ so these people were actually misleading the crowd so it's so whenever you find out that uh, there are people, whenever you find out that autobiography of some actors, you will not find out every details about them in the biography. Only some details about their achievement, about their activities, you know, about the school, about the family, what happened before they were born, where they were born is much more important than the date or something else. Even uh, during the time of uh, Jesus Christ, no one has the exact date, you know, of when they were when they were born or like when they died. No exact date. None of the deities have an exact date of their death and their birth. It's the same with Lord Jesus Christ. No, he did not. He does not have the exact date and birth mentioned in any of the scriptures in any of the sources. So, and this actually is a very important message for you and me because if we don't try to grasp all all of these things, the people around us will actually you know mislead us by giving us misguided misinformation and uh, they, they will actually ruin our belief in Lord Jesus Christ so I want to tell you that it's impossible for Jesus to travel to Nalanda University for education because the Bible clearly mentions that Jews are not allowed to worship idols the Jews they only are allowed to worship 
one and only God called Jehovah. So Jews are not idol worshippers, they are not pagans. So Jews, they always hated, always hated the pagan cultures. So I don't understand why many Indians and the Buddhists think that Jesus traveled to learn from the pagan cultures and pagan religions and the rituals, which is actually impossible in the case of Lord Jesus Christ. Even his disciples, they never ever, you know, worship the pagan idols pagan culture and pagan, pagan teachings but instead they were even ready to die instead of bowing down to this kind of pagan culture pagan idol worshipping and various kind of rituals and the practices that was happening in this surrounding nation of Southeast Asia or South Asian countries so that's a very clear that I want to point out that even uh, Exodus 20 clearly mentions that the Jews are not allowed to worship idols besides the only God who created them. It's in the Ten Commandments. So Ten Commandments were very important for the Jews and it is very important for Lord Jesus Christ because by the age of 12 he was debating with various kind of Pharisees, the teachers and the prominent people of the time in the temple and the people at the temple were called rabbis and they were priests and they could not handle the question that Jesus Christ was asking and they knew that Jesus Christ was already filled with wisdom knowledge and power and he grew up in the um, favor of man and God so Jesus Christ is uh, you know in the first half before he was 12 he grew up uh, in the wisdom of God uh, in his stated tears in the favor of God and man and even after 12 years uh, until he was 30, he grew up in his years, he became healthy, he grew up in um, uh, knowledge of wisdom of God and in the favor of God and man. So he, he grew up along with those kind of various kind of peoples around him in the Galilee and in Nazareth. So it's impossible for him to go to uh, Nalanda University for his education because he was in the temple. He already has his own system of getting educated in synagogues at that time. And they were all rabbis at that time. They were all religious scriptures at that time. And they had their own uh, writing system at that time. They had their own alphabets at that time. They had their own, you know, uh, literatures and the languages at that time. And their culture was so rich that the Roman Empire was actually scared of them. The Greeks were as actually scared of them. And even the uh, wise men of the East, they knew that this man is going to be king of the world. This man is going to save the world from sins, iniquities and transgressions. So it's impossible for Jesus who had been already prophesied that he would be wise, he would be a wise counselor, that he would bring light to the world. It, he doesn't need to come to India and China and Tibet to learn from Buddhism, to learn from, you know, various kind of Hindu religion and Hindu text. It's quite impossible and it's impossible for Jesus to uh, learn Sanskrit of that time because if you look at the book of Gospels, you'll find out that Jesus was speaking at least three to four languages. He was speaking Aramic, he was speaking Latin, he was speaking uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Hebrew languages and maybe he was speaking one more language. Uh, that isn't mentioned in the Bible, but I don't really understand. He was he never spoke any Hindi language. He never spoke any Sanskrit language and Sanskrit words are never uh, It never even was uttered through the mouth of Lord Jesus Christ So he never knew about the language of Indians. He uh, he he, uh, he was God He knows every language, but then he never spoke those language while he was on earth but even Hindus they do not know Greek at that time the Sanskrit people they did not know Hindu uh, um, language uh, at that time Hindi language is a very new language compared to Tamil languages compared to Sinhalese languages compared to other South Indian languages and compared to other languages that developed in the world so it's quite you know misleading information that we have today around us surrounding us the rumors around us it's like a yellow journalism that happened you know uh, spreading false information around us about Lord Jesus Christ and these journalists and these philosophers and this even American preachers you know they advocated this kind of uh, false information and they tried to even make movies and they wrote various kind of books and Hindu gurus they are always after these sources they always claim you know Hindu gurus when they travel to America when they travel to Europe when they travel to uh, you know African countries when they come to Nepal 
All they claim is that Jesus traveled to India to learn from Hindu gurus. He traveled to India in Nalanda University to learn from, you know, Buddhist monks. And in this way, they brainwash us. In this way, they brainwash the Westerners and the Europeans and the uh, new tribes that has been uh, originating in the country, uh, in various kind of nations and in various kind of continents. Uh, so I believe that uh, it's very important for you and me to understand that Jesus, he never traveled to India. He never came to Kashmir. He never came to Ladakh. He, he never came to monasteries to learn about um, various kind of religions. He already knew everything. But at the same time, he grew up in Galilee in, and in Nazareth and in uh, surrounding areas with various kind of Roman people, with Greek people, with Sumerian people, with uh, Canaanite people with uh, with galatians and uh, you know all of these uh, pagan people but he was never never influenced by these pagan rituals uh, the pagan rituals uh, practiced by greeks and the romans were uh, much closely uh, noted by jesus christ he he had seen them practice this kind of uh, evil practices he knew about the child sacrifices that was happening in these pagan rituals among the Greeks, among the Roman Empire, among the Canaanites, among the Samaritans, among many other religions of that time. And they were even sacrificing animals to different other deities. And those religions were quite similar. The practices in those religions were quite similar to the practices that was happening in the uh, uh, Dadin uh, Hindu uh, kingdom, Dadin India at that time. So Jesus Christ never has to come here because the Roman uh, Empire was so large that it was in control. The most intelligent people like Greeks, the philosophers at that time was near Jesus Christ. The Greek people, they came and questioned Jesus Christ and he gave them a very scientific and philosophical answer and they went back. They never know how Jesus became so brilliant. You know, even the rabbis and the Pharisees, they did not know how Jesus Christ became so brilliant. Then Jesus Christ, he said, whatever he spoke, it, he doesn't spoke from his own. Whatever he listens from his father, that is what he speaks. So this is really important for you and me and you know that Jesus Christ was baptized by the John the Baptist and uh, John the Baptist witnessed who Jesus was. Jesus was the Lamb of the world and he was the Son of God. And he is going to baptize the people with fire and the Holy Spirit and is going to save the world from sins, iniquities and transgressions. That is what he did. And Bible tells that, you know, uh, God was going to send a figure like Elijah before uh, Jesus would come into this world. And that Elijah was no one else, but he was John the Baptist. So we should always align the things that we hear with the things that with the Old Testament. So we should compare the Old, um, New Testament with the Old Testament and the life of Jesus Christ with the prophecies of the Old Testament. And we should actually, you know, come with common understanding instead of comparing Jesus Christ, his life, you know, with various kind of other religious texts like Hinduism, the Vedas and Buddhist texts and the history, history books and all of these kind of things. Even before this text up existed, even if these texts were created, the historians, even before they appeared, the life of Jesus Christ was already prophesied by various kind of prophets of the Old Testament. Since the book of Genesis, the life, the hints about Jesus Christ appears. Who, how he is going to be, what he is going to do, uh, what is the purpose of Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what w will be his name, how will his childhood be like. If you look at the book of Isaiah, you will find out that uh, in one of the verses, there is a comparative thing where uh, a person says, I would always wake up in the morning because God would wake me up and I would pray to God, I would listen to the word of God. So Jesus Christ was like that. He would wake up early in the morning. He would spend time with God. He would listen to only God and no one else. And he knew who his God was. And he never worshipped an idol. So Hinduism and Buddhism, they worship idol. Buddhism, at least, it is an atheist religion. Hinduism, it believes in deity. But those kind of deities are rejected by the Bible. So Bible even rejects the deity of Greeks, it even rejects the deity of Egyptians, the Roman Empire. And if you look at the New Testament, you'll find out that the idol practices, the magical practices, the sorcery, sorcery, sorceries and the books related with the magical practices, they were burnt. 
they were thrown away. So if Jesus uh, was in India, then why he returned back to uh, Jerusalem? He could have never done that. So if uh, he had learned something from Hinduism or Buddhism, he would go back to Jerusalem and talk something about Buddha. He would have talked something about Krishna. He never uttered the names of these Hindu deities and the name of Buddha and the monks. So Jesus Christ always mentioned about the prophets, the name of prophets, the book of the Old Testament, and he taught the disciples out of the teachings of the prophets, out of the book of the wisdom, out of the five books of Moses, uh, out of various kind of chronicles and the historical books that has been found in the Bible instead of any other religious texts that can be found in the world. So I believe now you can understand that Jesus Christ never traveled to India for his learning and wisdom and Jesus Christ is the only true God. So I believe that after listening to this you will never fall into temptation, never fall into confusion that Jesus Christ ever traveled to India and Tibet for his learning. He never was there in Nalanda University. He was a pure student of God. He, by the age of 12, was master and he was asking difficult questions. Even the rabbis and Pharisees of Israelites could not answer him. So thank you so much. I want to come up with more kind of topic like this and bless you. Pray for me. Pray for my channel. Have a nice day. Thank you.